Hello and welcome back to another video of Calcare. So today's video is going to be on a special Pi Day program that I have made. Uh, it basically helps you memorize or just learn in general the first 100 digits of Pi. Um, so it's pretty fun. I honestly don't know the first 100 digits of Pi yet. So I'm probably going to be using this program and at least trying to learn at least the first 100 I think would be a pretty good goal to get to. I think uh, it'd be kind of fun. So with that, I hope you enjoy the rest of today's video. Okay, so now I'm going to be showing off program pies. So I'm going to execute program pie and it's going to put some pies on the screen. It's just like a nice way to separate uh, when you put in the digits. So you can also do different symbols if you want. Uh, but I chose Pi because, well, it's a Pi Day themed video. So now I'm going to input Pi because it's uh, asking me to input what I think Pi is. So let's say 3.14. I'm just going to start out with the 3.14. And it's going to check that and make sure that's right. And you can put in any amount of digits as long as it's not over 100 digits. Because uh, otherwise it's going to give you an error because, well, I only have 100 digits in. But if you know more than 100 digits, uh, leave a comment down in the comments. I'd be curious to know if anyone knows uh, more than 100 digits of pi. As I said, I personally don't. I know around 20 or so. Um, so yeah, that'd be kind of cool if someone knew more than uh, 100 digits of pi. And in that case, you can also, I'll show you later, you can put in more digits so you're able to do that to if a thousand if you really want to. So yeah. So 3.14, then you don't have to type in the 3.14159, you just type in 159, so it starts off wherever you were. And then it's 26535, and then 89.79.323, and that's the extent of my knowledge, honestly. Um, so I'm just going to put in 1234, just so you obviously know that it's not correct. So it's 3.14159265358979323. And then it'll give me the next digits, 8462. So however many digits I enter in here, it's going to also give me the correct digits. Uh, that's one feature that kind of helps you learn. So if you don't know what the next digits are, like I didn't know what the next digits are, so I just put in some random stuff, and then it'll give you what the correct digits are, so you're able to go back and actually kind of learn what pi is. So now I'm going to do like a tiny little time lapse and I'm going to see uh, how far I can get in this program. So yeah, I hope you Okay, so now that you have seen a demonstration of program pi, I'm now going to show you how you can make it on your own calculator. So go to uh, the new tab, uh, you would go to the new tab, but since I already have it created, I'm just going to edit program pi. So as you can see, the first step is to clear home. So it's clearing anything off that you may have on your home screen. Then I'm having pi uh, stored into string one, or string two, I mean, sorry. So I recommend going to a website uh, to find Pi because it's not going to be extremely easy to copy it on here. Um, I recommend going to a website that splits it up into like groups of five. It's really easy to copy it down that way and then just check to make sure uh, that you don't have any errors. It's quite possible that I might have an error uh, in this. So you never know. So then uh, to find string two, uh, you use the VARES key you click seven for string, and then it gives you the list of all the strings, string one to string zero. Uh, so in this program, I only use string one and string two. So you don't have to worry about the rest of those strings. And remember to find basic programming commands, click the program button, and it gives you if, then, else, all that kind of stuff. And then in the IO tab, I'll be using uh, input and display. So those are two that you're going to need to use. And if you can't find something, remember, you can always look in the catalog. So second and zero, that takes you to an alphabetical list of every command on the calculator, uh, except a few uh, exceptions. But for the purpose of this video, I don't believe there's anything that you can't find in the catalog. Uh, strings you cannot, uh, so just use that VARES key for those strings. 
Um, so you'll use length. So if you click L, that'll take you down to the L's. And as you can see, length is right there. Okay, so Delver string one, Delver A, and Delver C. Repeat until A is equal to one. Display 16 pies right here. Uh, so the reason I know it's 16 is because if you bump the pies on this row up, it cover it would cover the whole screen. Uh, so that's an easy way to tell if you have 16 or something or if you want to fill up the whole screen. You just go until you reach uh, the same spot as the quotes. That's another good way to look at it. So input string 1. For B, comma 1, comma length of string 1. Uh, if sub string 2, comma B plus C, comma 1 is not equal to sub string 1 at B, comma 1, uh, so C is a variable that I'll explain in just a second. Um, so what this line is doing is basically it's checking. Uh, it's going one at a time, so it's checking, okay, did you put three in? Yes. Did you put point? Did you put one, four? And it checks to see to make sure that you put in everything right. Um, so, for example, if you have 3.15, it's going to say, oh, wait, the 5, this is a 4 in string 2, and it's a 5 in string 1. So that's going to store 1 into A, which, if you remember, I have uh, repeat until A is equal to 1. So that's going to end the program after it checks the rest of the stuff. So basically, what C is, it's a placeholder. Um, so I'm going to, it's going to be right here. Uh, so end, end that for loop, then C plus length of string 1 store into C. So C is a placeholder that determines where it's going to start when looking at string 2, uh, which is actual the actual pi. So it's going to say, okay, he ended at 23 this first time, so I need to start at 24 because the length of string 1. So if you put in three digits, it's going to add 3 to C. So basically, C is just a placeholder to make sure that it starts in the right spot. So basically, C is making sure you don't have to start at the beginning every time. Because uh, I find if you type in the same thing over and over, or if you're getting to like 70 digits, you don't want to type in all 70 digits and then get one wrong and it's like, oh man. So it's a lot easier to do it like this in my opinion. But if you don't want to do it like that, then you can just get rid of uh, some of that stuff. Then I have, if C is not equal to 100, then length of string 1, uh, sub string 2, comma, C minus answer, multiplied by C is greater than 0, plus 1, comma, answer. So I'm only subtracting answer if C is greater than 0. So if you didn't fail on the first one, if you put in 3.15, it'll still give you that 3.14, because otherwise it's going to start at uh, the 0 spot of string 1, or string two, I mean, and so you don't want that to happen. And then answer is what it's recalling. It's just recalling length of string one. It's just a way to optimize it a little bit. And then I have display answer and an end because we need an end for uh, if C is not equal to 100 then. So that is the whole entire program for you to play program pi. I hope you did enjoy today's video. Uh, I hope you watch some future videos or check out my channel. I hope you do enjoy my content and that kind of stuff. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope you're able to memorize some digits of pi.